there's not enough days. We should have like 35 days in a month instead of 31. I swear. <laughs> And it is 10 48 in the morning and you may be like Kelsey wow you have a lot of energy and that's because I've been up since 4 a.m. It felt like a money grab Joann's as well putting out what they had as their witchy line a lot of it looked like stuff from last year with a few extra things added so really you, it just seemed like they were putting out overstock hey y'all and welcome back to the vlog i just posted my very first vlog so please go back and watch that if you have not and we're getting back to it. It is basically the end of the day because I needed to kind of figure out how I wanted these to look. Um, you may have noticed that these vlogs are really, really saturated, trying out this really contracted, like saturated um, LUT on these because I really want there to be a clear, like visually something very different from my vlogs and my regular videos visually and i really like the idea of like day-to-day -day stuff being in like technicolor so i'm working on it it's not perfect yet and i still have to figure out like how saturated i want it to look um looking back at the video i like the saturation but it works in like places that are well lit and then places that aren't as well lit, it's a little bit too much. So it's all growing pains, but I'm really excited to already have it out. I'm excited to kind of see like where this kind of goes and even what it looks like. Like I like the idea that I don't have like pop-ups, but it's more like just kind of notes here and there. They feel more like artist diaries or something. So. I had plans for today and those plans were mainly to do the front yard because we bought a bunch of stuff to landscape and it was one of the things I wanted to do um, before I started my new gig and the whole relaxing thing and whatever. Today was a great day to do it because it was sunny but not hot and I ended up one editing the vlog because I was still trying to figure out the look that I wanted for it. Picking out my uh, TBR for Pride, which we'll get to that in just a moment, a little sneak peek of it. Because bef you guys will be seeing my TBR wrap-up video before this comes out. So, it's not really a sneak peek, but y'all can kind of hear my thoughts past, like, the whole, this is my TBR type of thing. <laughs> so, it, we didn't get to that. I'm hoping to maybe, like, take, like, kind of walk around while I read this arc which is coming out on June 4th it's my murder by Katie Williams I was sent this by Penguin Random House it doesn't seem like that long of a book but I'm a slow physical reader so while this is only barely hitting 300 pages it doesn't even hit 300 pages it hits like 291 I'm interested to see if I'll finish it because I do want to be good especially with getting physical arcs I think getting e arcs is really easy and I'm not an e-reader um at all so I don't really use NetGalley I don't really use NetGalley I have a NetGalley account I'm sure that the ratio on there is horrible because I've not really read anything um on NetGalley but the physicals i don't know it, there's just something more concrete about it for me so i want to like read the arcs that i get so that i get more arcs and everything and review them this arc as well as another one which is i think the gods of the woods or something is another one that i have to read um early on in the month because that one comes out june 11th and i plan to read both of these this month but as we know this month got crazy and I barely even, I didn't even finish my TBR. Like I didn't even get to finish Island Witch, 
which is disappointing to be honest um, but I'll find a reason to to read it again I have my TBR for pride for June and where is it oh it's out it's in the living room but I think I can um, actually I can't hold on a moment I need my list because there's a lot on here. Definitely buying off more than I can chew. But so much sounded so good and I don't know what my time is gonna be like now. So I don't know. I thought I should just put all these on my TBR and see what calls to me. One, I wanted to definitely get a lot of identities in this TBR. As always, I'm always trying to try and diversify my TBR list as much as possible within like what we're celebrating for the month. And I noticed that I had a very, very hard time, one, finding intersex uh, books, because unfortunately, it seems that a lot of people, as with Pacific Islander, when it came to me picking out books for last month, uh, don't seem to have a clear consensus on the identity and the description of the identity. When I put in intersex horror novels or intersex horror authors, I got a lot of transgender authors and novels. And I feel like people use intersex as an umbrella term. I think that there's so many different ways to describe intersexuality that people lump it in with transgender in the identity when the two aren't synonymous like they're both not like interchangeable for the other depending on how you identify um if that makes sense and so it's unfortunate because i couldn't really find a lot of intersex uh horror novels and i am one of those people who want to know more because that is one of the like queer identities that i don't really know as much about bisexuality i can talk about all day because i am bisexual I wanted to learn more about our identity within the queer community that I'm not as familiar with in order to educate myself and also just like humanize the identity. And it's unfortunate that like I really struggled to find anyone with an intersex uh, identity, like in especially in horror and thriller. Like that's another thing too. Again, like you you look up these identities and you find historical fiction or nonfiction or whatever and you're just kind of like there needs to be diversity within the genres as well so it's it was frustrating and what i did find i'm really excited to read and i can't wait to tell y'all about it um as well as another one that was a bit of a struggle to find and i think that's it's because a lot of people don't don't really find it as necessarily queer until it's like they're confronted with it and that's asexuality and that's basically um you can be a like or arrow which is essentially being aromantic or asexual meaning like you just you're ambivalent you don't really feel any sort of way towards being sexual towards somebody or a row which is being like ambivalent to being romantic not wanting to really be romantic with anybody as well there's not a lot of representation of that in our society what i did find is that there were plenty of asexual characters but they were described as being asexual in the way that they were acting and in the book that i found the mention of the character being asexual is mentioned like once and they don't really like focus on it for too long Again, a little frustrated as well because I feel like these identities aren't talked about enough and that's also why there's such a misunderstanding around these identities because they're not they're not talked about, they're not put at the forefront enough as much as, I mean, you can throw a rock and hit a bisexual novel. Like, it's frustrating. I'm not even, like, I don't even identify and I can see that it's frustrating. So again, we just have to do better. We have to, these publishers have to do better. We have to do better with our research. Just do better. All that being said, this is my quick lineup. I'm going to talk about it more during, well, I did talk about it more, I'm trying to speak in the future here, um, in my video for this week, talking about my May wrap up as well as my June TBR, which considering my May wrap up is so short for this month, I think along june tbr may even everything out so <laughs> let's hope 
I know this is a lot. This is a lot for me. I usually average around four, maybe five books a month. So for this many books to be like on this list, I will find it very surprising if I even get through like a majority of these. <laughs> um, first and foremost, the Z word, which just recently came out earlier May, May 4th, I think it came out. And it's a zombie apocalypse. Main character is bisexual. She has to basically uh, fight off the zombie apocalypse with some of her queer friends. And it talks about queer community and survival as well as she's doing this while she's surviving with her ex-girlfriend. So I think that that's funny. I think that being bisexual, I'd love to hear about that. My physical read, I'm going to be reading Night of the Living Queers, which is an anthology. I got this back like two months ago or so, like back in March when I visited um, Octavia's bookshelf in Pasadena um, during my like Women's History Month uh, like small bookshop video that I did. You can go check that out if you haven't. Um, I picked that up while I was there in preparation for Pride because it looked really good and I love you know, I love an anthology. It's really great to find like new authors and everything. So I'll be reading that during my sprints um, this month. And then Come Out, Come Out by Alexa Onyx. Um, this one I stumbled across online and it has a pansexual male character and a bisexual female character. It is a very dark romance and I've never really read a dark romance to be honest. So I thought that this would be a great time to maybe see if I'm into that genre. However, a lot of trigger warnings. There is suicide and like sex with a ghost involved in this, a lot of self-harm and depression. And we, I ordered the book because it's a uh, indie author and so there's not an audio available. Um, so I'm hoping that like I can maybe chip away at it throughout the month because I just don't feel like it's going to be something that I'm going to easily read. But I thought I should try out a dark romance and this one with like, like pansexual representation especially um from a male character I was really interested in um as well as the female male character um is described as being plus size so I really love that it was a bisexual plus size character as well so we will see how that goes uh Sorrowland by River Solomon I am super excited for this one and this is the intersexual um book wreck that I ended up reading um River Solomon came up a lot for intersex identity and that's because they're just like super well known. They've put out so many great like books. Um, I learned about River Solomon during the um, I Love Black Horror m a Month readathon and so I've been wanting to read their books. And this one is has an intersex main character and um, they end up, they're like basically being chased by the cult they escaped after having both of their children in the middle of the woods and they're just trying to survive with their family. And I was like, that sounds amazing. So, and I think this one is their uh, newest novel. So I'm really excited that I got the, um, audiobook for that one and then Survivor Song by Paul Tremblay this is the one that has asexual representation the main character who is trying to um, save her best friend who was bitten during this vi this rabies virus apocalypse type of thing is pregnant and she needs to get to a hospital before it takes over her body this is the same author but at the beginning of this year, I read The Paul Bears Club and I was mad at because I was just like, I don't think you know what you wrote. Like, you have no clue what you wrote. But I've heard from multiple people that The Paul Bears Club is one of Paul Tremblay's worst uh, novels because they all agree. They're like, you don't know what you wrote. <laughs> so I thought I could get the audiobook. It's not that long. Um, and I would try this one out, especially because I was struggling to find asexual representation. Another one was Just Like Home. That I also heard a lot of people didn't like that book. So, and they're not like explicitly asexual. People kind of just assume. And I didn't want to read something where it was assumed that they were asexual or somebody came to those conclusions on their own. I wanted it where 
somebody like in the book there is mention of it and even if it's just mentioned once it's like okay got it then we have this is kind of like the back half that was the starting five here's the back five uh the trees grew because i bled there by eric laroca eric laroca i'm pretty sure it's eric laroca um they're a transgender author who is constantly being talked about for their extreme horror their body horror and everything in the horror community and i'm tired of being out the loop so we are finally reading an Eric LaRocca. Eric LaRocca or Eric LaRocca? Um, it's definitely Eric LaRocca. Apologies in advance. Um, book. So I will be reading that. And they're small stories. I have the um, audiobook. So it'll be digestible. A couple of these are small stories as well. The next one is a small story um, book as well. And that's Her Body and Other Parties by Carmen Maria Mercado. Again, apologies. The author's name is definitely Carmen Maria Machado. I am so excited to read this book. This one is probably starting five, to be honest. I I'm I may even start reading this. Well, it won't be tonight because I have an arc to read. But as soon as I can start reading it, I'm gonna be reading this book. It's a bunch of short stories, but it's Carmen Maria Mercado. They're a bisexual author. I constantly hear about her like books being amazing and i know that they're probably amazing because her essay in um it came from the closet was amazing it was on jennifer's body and the conversation of being bisexual especially in high school and being in love with your best friend and i just i was like i just feel seen it was just so amazing to read so i've been wanting to read her work for a while now and between this and in the dream house which is kind of a fictional memoir type of thing about her experience with an ex and the abuse that she experienced during that time and that just leaves several people are typing by calvin kasuke apologies in advance if that's completely butchered um and they're a transgender author and i've been wanting to read that novella it's basically about like this person Gerald whose conscious gets um like sucked into a slack app and like AI starts kind of messing with it and like he asks another co-worker to try and help him get back to his body because he doesn't know how he got in there and it's about like AI and the work environment and like how much trust we put into these systems and it seems really great. I've been wanting to read it for a while. And there's not enough days. We should have like 35 days in a month instead of 31. I swear. That or like maybe 28 hours instead of 24 hours in a day. I don't know. But time is just slipping away from me. So I'm going to quit dragging my jaws and get to it. Uh, I'll see you on the other side. Hello, hello. It is Sunday and we're about to do 
something that I've been meaning to do since I've been on my two week break. But it just so happened that it ended up being able to happen basically on my last day before I start my new gig. And that is landscaping our front yard. I have been wanting to plant flowers and shrubs and everything and I have bought them and they've been sitting in their pots in front of our yard and today is the first day that we can do them. So let's let's just get into it because it's already late in the day and I really want to finish this. <laughs> It is Monday. It is my first day at my internship. Super excited. And it is 1048 in the morning. And you may be like, Kelsey, wow, you have a lot of energy. And that's because I've been up since 4 a.m. My internship is on the East Coast, so I am basically three hours ahead of anything I'm going to be doing with the internship, which is both a great thing and a horrible thing. Horrible in the sense that... I have to get up at 4 a.m. in order for me to look presentable as well as if I want to start working out again I've got to work wake up earlier and because I'll be getting up so early the idea is that my butt's gonna be getting into bed at around 10 a.m. 10 p.m. like the grandma that I should be that all being considered I've been up basically like five or six hours <laughs> so my brain is broken on time right now. Everyone around my house is like still drinking their coffees and still getting into the day and I've been basically awake since the rooster was up. So far it's a lot of information but I'm really excited. Of course I can't share like tons and whatever but <clears throat> I'm really excited for everything and to learn so much. It's been a really long time since I've kind of been in a position like this to be like learning something new and for the first time and I was thinking it was going to be really anxiety written and instead I feel very positive about it and open to the possibilities of it all. The positive thing of me being three hours behind everyone else I'm working with is that I'll be getting off at around 2 p.m. every day which means I have the rest of the day to do everything else I need to do. Which probably will be the time that I start working out. I will start probably working out in the afternoon. Something along those lines. I'm also starting with a personal trainer and stuff. So we'll see how that also goes. I don't know. Maybe today I'll like leave because my partner can't leave the house until he's done with the work. And we have some errands to run. But maybe I'll like leave the house just for funsies in the middle of the day because I can. <laughs> so we... We're gonna we're gonna see where that takes me um but yeah i swear that there will be more updates and cool things happening that aren't just in this office because you guys have seen so many updates happen for me in this office oh the planting from yesterday we will see some of those plants needed to be watered more than they were being watered and they were in their pots for like a week and apparently like the marigolds especially were like that was too long to keep us in these pots and you needed to be watering us like twice and you only watered us once so they are looking a little dead but i'm hoping that once the sun comes out and we keep watering them and everything they'll get their shit together and they'll be fine um everything else was also planted i do think that i'm gonna have to buy some grass seed because of how much we had to redo our front lawn last year because it was basically just dirt and plow it and all that other stuff in order for it to even grow grass in the first place and then we basically just ripped up a ton of it in order to do all this landscaping again so we have a ton my partner also like cleared one of our trees so we have a bunch of stuff so i didn't really do a like final result because in all honesty it looks a hot mess right now uh, it will not, we have to trust the process on it and everything. So maybe in another two weeks or so at the end of June, you guys will see like what it looks like. But right now y'all not seeing it. <laughs> it, doesn't, it looks like 
who did this <laughs> right now but I have learned like how we have with the bougainvillea that we planted in our front yard um you really just have to wait and it's all a patience game so I'm going to wait and see where it goes from there um and yeah that's pretty much all for updates um I'll check back in in maybe another couple of hours when I maybe leave the house and see what I kind of do from there oh I finished several people are typing really great can't wait to tell y'all about it in my wrap up or in one of my reviews and I don't want to put too much I don't know how much of like my book reviews and like things that I'm reading I want to share in these because like I have wrap ups for a reason I don't know maybe I won't go in such detail during the wrap up so they won't be so long because I'll cover some of it in here but one thing that I really loved about the book is um there's like these monologues so it's not really the whole point of the book but like these monologues that happen with Gerald because he's having these existential crises as he's stuck in slack that's our main character one that I really loved and I felt like was really relevant to where we are right now as society and what we're dealing with in the world right now is like you're on social media and there are like three or four wars and genocides going on right now and you're sitting here and you're like oh we're here like you know donate to this remember that this is happening here's the news and everything never mind the fact that of like just the news is happening in the U.S. 24 7 um that isn't necessarily great um and then you're like oh I came across this really cute video of a dog like should I share this or like my silly book recommendations or art related things or like screenshots and memes from horror movies that are like I find funny or something and you know if you go through people's stories your or your timeline you're like seeing like this barrage of that like you're just like how can you go from like some of the horrible acts of mankind into some of the funniest parts of mankind some of the most creative parts of mankind back to like the most disgusting parts of mankind and that's social media and like social media is this microcosm like concentrated location of all the things happening in the world all at once and you sometimes feel weird when you're sitting there and you're like do I just continue posting about the news and everything to show that I have a morality like a moral compass and I know what's happening but also at the same time I'm also enjoying some of this other content that's keeping me alive and not going from going insane on how much negativity and crap or just, just like constantly in the world because crap is always going to be happening in the world unfortunately that's the society and the world that we live in but at the same time as those like really crappy things are happening really beautiful and creative things are happening as well and it kind of Gerald kind of goes to this existential crisis of the fact that the world is constantly experiencing both and it's your job living in that world to find your own personal balance of living in those things. But your social media is really just like a really concentrated scope of you dealing with that. Um, also think conversations of like your consciousness versus the body, how we live in these bodies that are like our whole identity because our society works on our physical selves. Like our society reacts to us in this physical body. Your identity is reference to your sexuality, which is living in this body it's not your necessarily your consciousness but your body um your racism in how society works within that microcosm for you so for me like being a queer woman of color in an interracial relationship who is plus sized who are these many different intersections of like our society all of those intersections are things that have to do with my physical being nothing necessarily about my conscious one and how your conscious being your conscious identity is one that is secondary in our society to your first identity which is your physical one once people realize your physical identity they can only then chip away at it to get to your conscious identity and I think that that was a really interesting conversation to talk about as well and that how especially in queerness we constantly are talking about not being perceived but the whole thing is is that operating in our society we're constantly being perceived we, we be we're perceived even in the queer community and everything because of what your identity is to be related to the queer community as well so I thought that that was also interesting as, uh, as well this is a lot of concepts and I think that it was entertaining while like reading those concepts and stuff I'm still deciding what exactly I want to give it 
as far as a rating so look out for that on my instagram that should be coming out soon and yeah i'm now starting the z word which has been fine so far i think they're starting to figure out the zombie apocalypse is happening but we'll see i'm like an hour into the audiobook and it's like an eight or nine hour audiobook so only slightly in so yeah i'm gonna do some of this work that i need to do for my internship and probably check back in later when i decide to maybe leave the house for a moment hey y'all so it's later in the day and it's like 3 30 no nearly 4 but i am off and i wanted to leave the house and take advantage of the fact that i'm basically done as far as like physical like actual work is concerned and i decided i was gonna hit it at home because <laughs> halloween has started trickling in um i think i re i should have released my bonus vlog already which was basically i ended up taking it out of my first like weekly vlog because of how long it was but essentially it's me bashing <laughs> for a whole like couple of like maybe a half an hour i don't know how long it ends up being because it's I haven't finished editing it yet, but for a whole half an hour or so, basically going through all of the Joanne and Michael releases that were early releases and Pottery Barn and stating that I wasn't impressed, um, which I haven't been. I haven't been at all. Like with the early Halloween releases, they're very, I get what they were trying to do, like something witchy and like everyday goth that they felt like to be out year round but instead for me personally while i'm not a huge fan of you know the purple gothy witchy look in my halloween decor and stuff like that i can at least still appreciate it and the thing is is that a lot of it looked cheap it felt kind of like a money grab i started to kind of hear about some classic halloween starting to show up which makes sense because it's june and that's when classic halloween well, that's when halloween usually drops so I've been hearing that At Home has started dropping some things. Um, I'm hearing that Joann's has also dropped some classic Halloween. So we're gonna go by there as well um, and see if we can find any places that like have the classic Halloween look. I haven't seen anything in particular that I'm like, oh, I really want that thing. But I just wanna go out, see it in person be like okay hey halloween hunting season i guess has kind of started as i've said multiple times and i'm <laughs> i'm hoping that this will kind of be like the last time i kind of stated but i really do want to thrift a good amount of my decor this year one because of funds and also two because i'm really certain that i want the vintage halloween look and unfortunately it's clear that these um stores just aren't gonna give me that I would I really would love for one of these years to finally be the year that vintage Halloween comes back we keep on getting shown that that's not the case so and from what I'm seeing from these like Halloween decor lines so far I don't think that this year is going to be the year that it comes back either Michaels usually does like a vintagey Halloween line amongst their Halloween releases and the one that was supposed to be vintage last year just wasn't all that you actually kind of got more out of the Edgar Allan Poe release that they did um and I got a few things from that but even then it was just kind of like okay some of these things are cool here and there um I think now that I'm kind of more like I know what I'm looking for as far as Halloween's concerned when I see any other Halloween I'm like cool Halloween's out but if it's nothing that like kind of fits that, I'm kind of like, okay, cool, it's out. I think once Halloween starts showing up in Home Goods, which I have started seeing that TJ Maxx and Marshalls has started releasing it online, and Home Goods is a subsidiary of both of those, so it probably will start showing up on Home Goods soon. I don't like to buy my Halloween stuff online, to be honest, unless it's like an eBay thing or you can only purchase online and it's like a small business or something. Um, mainly because one, I like the hunt. <laughs> I'm a, I get upset when I can't find something, but I, even if I can order it online, I'd rather try and buy it in stores because it's kind of the whole part of it all. Um, for me personally, as well as the fact, one, a lot, of, I have heard too many horror stories where things get broken, especially Halloween stuff just isn't packed correctly for some reason i don't know why but i almost always hear that people are always getting their stuff broken um which i just i don't want to deal with that either we're gonna go in here see if they even have it 
usually at home, my at home, because I live in LA, we usually get everything last. We don't really get it too often. But some people that I follow on the Halloween Instagrams um, who live out in Southern California have started seeing it. So let's just take a chance. We only have like one or two at homes in um, near LA. We don't have like a ton of them everywhere. So if it's not here, like I'm, I'm not driving all the way out to Irvine in order to check another one. So we're gonna see if it's here. If it's not, that's okay. I don't really see anything that I want anyways. It's more so me just trying to get out and get some fresh air and then go to Joanne's and see if they have something as well. Okay, that was really long. Let's, let's go. No luck, as you saw from that clip. They still only have 4th of July, which I wasn't really expecting much. That at home usually is the last to really get much of anything. Every year that, any year that I've ever gotten anything from at home, I've had to drive like basically all the way out to Fullerton. So I wasn't expect, I was gonna be surprised if I actually saw Halloween there. Next stop, there was a Joann's six minutes away. So I'm now I'm here. I don't think that this Joanne's really gonna have anything though because it's in like a really small shopping center. So I would be kind of surprised if there was any like actual Halloween here and not just that early Halloween stuff. We'll see, I may be surprised. There's also a thrift store 10 minutes away from here that's like a small thrift store. And I usually like to go to like smaller thrift stores instead of the Sabres and Goodwills and stuff because people, older people drop off their stuff there and it's not like ran through by people who are just trying to resell. So we're gonna hit there right after this. it is hot in this car so i'm not turning it off because i was sweating like crazy last time i had it off. surprised yes that there was any halloween in there absolutely and apparently some people even started to pick at it you could tell the fact that there was that outside hanging jack-o-lantern tin thing or whatever was a hundred dollars i get that you know, Michaels and Joann's or whatever, they price their things to be marked down, but even for 50% off, even for $50, that thing wasn't worth $50. Get you, wait until Walmart, one of these other places, releases one of those things and spray paint your own. It will be cheaper and you can make like a hundred of those things for a hundred dollars. That was insane to me. I'm still trying to like, it's not computing. Like what, what about that? was a hundred dollars nothing about that item was a hundred dollars we are about to go to this thrift store usually with these thrift stores though i find a lot of christmas and i don't need christmas i need halloween so i may check back in when i get back to the house um just because i do still have errand actual errands to run today and with my partner and i want to make sure i get back in time so that we can do that hello hello i definitely got back yesterday started running errands and did not update y'all whatsoever. I went to that thrift store and uh, while it had a lot of great like glass cups and stuff like that, um, they didn't have any like Halloween or anything that I was looking for for my Halloween decor this year. Um, so yeah, that was wash, but it was all good because my money stayed in my pocket and I went home. So there you go. Had a great meeting for the Nightmare Curator, the Pride issue today with Ellie. I'm really excited for the next issue and thank y'all so much for all the support that we've received so far on the first issue. Um, y'all are really great for 
signing up for sharing and everything we hope that this next issue is really great and y'all enjoy it because we're already excited about it we have a lot of plans this one is going to be is our pride issue so it's going to be focused on the queer community within horror because inherently horror is queer we're working on that right now already getting started on that i'm working through five million other things and just kind of finished up my day for my internship which they had like this uh, launch meeting. So apparently season by season, publishers will have a meeting to talk through the upcoming books in the next year and a half. So they work in increments of year and a half and have three seasons, usually a year. And that was exciting, a lot of fun, a lot of great covers, loved it. Great to know what's coming. Um, so that was fun. I am now about to work on some commissions that I need to get done, some assets for commissions I need to get done, as well as work on editing that bonus vlog that I mentioned earlier that is for, that, that kind of just mentions like my thoughts as I go through Pottery Barn and Joanne's. I'm going back and forth on, on actually like posting it or doing it because I wish that I would have screen reported. So that you guys could see what I was looking at as I was talking about it. And, um, hello, I also got an email this morning from Riverhead Publishers in print who are putting out Little Rot. If you do not know, Little Rot is an upcoming thriller novel by the absolutely amazing... Akweke Mezi. They are putting out, everyone's been talking about this for probably the last couple of months to a, almost a year, and it is their thriller Little Rot, which a lot of people have been excited for because it is so hard to find a unhinged uh, thriller type of novel taking place in Nigeria. Um, with an unhinged main character. So everybody is super, super excited because that's exactly the breakdown of this book. And they just hit me about sending me a copy. That's so exciting. I I was really going to order this novel. So to have like, you know, Riverhead um, offer to send me a copy before the release is really, really dope. Um, and I'm gonna see where I can fit it in with one of my TBRs so I can read it this year and not too far from the release date. Honestly, me getting offers to get free books or ARCs or whatever, I don't, I can't see myself doing this another like couple of years or reading or whatever and putting it out there like my reviews and stuff and getting free books and not being impressed by it. Like I don't, I don't know how anybody is just going like, yeah, I got a free book and it's cool or whatever. Like, hello? That right there is like 15 to $20. And that's if it wasn't a hardcover, which we all know bumps up the price nearly 10 to 20 more bucks. So I'm super excited. I cannot wait to get this book. So thanks again to uh, Vivian over at Riverhead Books for sending me this copy um, that's coming my way. Speaking of books and privileges, I also found out that I get like a big old discount on all Penguin Head imprints. I mean, Pink Penguin Head. I just put together Riverhead and Penguin Random House. All Penguin Random House books, I apparently get a discount on currently while I'm in the internship. It's the employee discount, y'all, 60% off. I'm concerned that I'm going to spend a checks on these books because we're looking at thrift store prices for brand new books. So your girl needs to start gathering some titles and making some budgets <laughs> super exciting um and honestly I, i'm like really mulling it over i don't think that i'm going to end up putting hello he hears me talking like am i talking to myself and he opens the door i don't think i'm gonna end up putting out the bonus vlog of me talking about everything regarding Joanne's and Pottery Barn and Michael's um mainly because I just you know let's push you back a little bit I wish I would have screen recorded you guys can't even see what I'm looking at and it's, it's a little frustrating editing it back because it's just me like talking the entire time to you all um so I'll talk just slightly for a moment about what I kind of was getting at on 
the vlog because I do still want to talk about what it was all about. Essentially, it, it was filmed the day the Pottery Barn Halloween release came out and I was going through all of the release online and it just looked a lot like they just re-released what they put out last year. Absolutely. Like I scrolled through everything and they were saying it was a new release, but in all honesty, it really just looked like anything they put out any other year and extremely overpriced. And although I will say, I think the only thing that is worth Pottery Barn prices is their silverware and dishware sets and like party, like charcuterie boards and stuff like that. I think all of those I feel like are somewhat reasonably priced for new nice dishware. But at the same time, you could really piecemeal a lot of those things from Home Goods and TJ Maxx and Marshalls if you just are willing to hunt for it. If you're not, fine. But I think that it's ridiculous to spend like nearly $100 on like a pillow that lights up. And it's not even like amazing. They're sitting there and they're selling for like $50 or $60. Literally styrofoam, like do-it-yourself ghosts that you put on your front lawn. I get the Pottery Barn's for the minimalist girls, for the minimalist folks, but something about it just seems a little predatory as far as like Halloween lovers are concerned who are looking for some minimalism or something. So I didn't see anything that really like looked new, didn't really look worth the money, didn't seem like it was worth the hype. I think a lot of people are getting excited to be seeing Halloween so early and it's causing people to not look at what the things actually are they're just wanting to be the first to talk about it or the first to show it first to buy it or whatever instead of being actually like oh my god this is actually good or even good quality I went by Joanne's yesterday and saw some of those things and you know case in point me talking about that 10 outside outdoor skeleton like guy or whatever being a hundred dollars even marked down 60 percent like still seemed absolutely outrageous the witchy line the everyday goth lines that they both joann's and michael's put out they both look low quality they both did not look like anything that i know that anyone that i know personally would want that in their house 24 7 goth or not goth like the michael's line the oh my goth pillow even if you were like a gothy baby, like a baby goth who's like 14 years old and mom decided to like redo your entire bedroom, I could not see somebody going, let me get the oh my goth pillow. Like, and no shade to anybody who thought that that pillow was like funny. The shade really is towards the entire line and the fact that Michaels put out that line to kind of appease the audience that they've seen give them basically all of their money in recent years, which is which are the Halloween and Christmas people. Um, and so they released this everyday goth early Halloween Wednesday collection or whatever the case it was, which calling it the Wednesday collection seemed weird because it had pink in it. Wednesday would never wear pink, so I don't know. It felt like a money grab. Joann's as well, putting out what they had as their witchy line a lot of it looked like stuff from last year with a few extra things added so really you, it just seemed like they were putting out overstock they're like eh, let's put out some things we made last year that's left over and then let's add like a couple of items to make it seem like it's a new collection and it wasn't it was boring i mean if i see uh one of those like hands that are like supposed to be a psychic type of statue or whatever it's just like make something new Everything I saw was some sort of figural shape in either plastic or glass, and it had fairy lights inside of it. Um, moons were absolutely everywhere. There was one sign that said, um, it's just a phase, and it's supposed to be a play on words for people like who are goth being called, saying that, like, being told it's just a phase, and then it was moon phases. And it was supposed to be funny, but instead, it low-key kind of came off a little bit insensitive because I don't know anybody who is a part of like the witch community or is witchy or is into that type of look or goth it or like goth or something who are like yeah let's make fun of when like my parents said that it was just a phase that I was going to be into this stuff like it doesn't read I don't I haven't seen anybody who's gotten that sign that lights up or whatever I haven't seen anybody go oh I think this is really cute who's actually a part of that community at all 
um, because I just feel like it miss misses the mark. And seeing some of the stuff even in person, I continue to go, hmm, this kind of misses the mark. Now, I've heard that Joann's, and I'm sure if I go to a bigger Joann's, I may find it, has started to put out their, um, re some of their regular Halloween stuff. And I've seen things here and there, a lot of skeletons, a lot of like uh, lawn breakers and stuff where they, they like have their arms out and stuff. And their usual like orange and black velvet pumpkins that they kind of make every year. So again, it, it seems a bit more like that stuff that they're putting out is overstock rather than a brand new collection. I know the Joann's filed for bankruptcy. So I low key am sitting there and going, okay, Joann's, I, I expect you to be sitting here trying to have a money grab you need the money but like michael's so yeah i've just been kind of i've been bored with the things that have been released early um even the stuff for at home like i said before the things that i've seen i've not been like oh my god it's amazing i'm kind of just waiting for the full collections to come out for a lot of these stores with hopes that there's some classic halloween that leans a bit vintage it's just classic halloween period um, I think over the recent years, a lot of that, a lot of people are chasing the trends of the witchy purple Halloween look, which is fine. I'm glad that like, you know, it's expanding, the look is expanding, especially because of the fact that people are keeping their Halloween decor up all year. But there are still so many of us who love that classic Halloween look and aren't being catered to even around Halloween anymore. <laughs> and are being forced to basically go to thrift stores and yard sales and estate sales and eBay or whatever to look for anything that seems traditional since it seems like it's these companies are saying it's not in style anymore when there's obviously a lot of people who want it or else it wouldn't be upcharged as much as it is on places like eBay or at certain resellers or whatever the case is. Those are basically all my thoughts. That's basically that video that was supposed to come out. That's it all wrapped up. I'm not trying to be a Debbie Downer. I think I've heard a lot of people in the Halloween community who Halloween hunt and everything, like Jade Libra being one of those people. I think um, I've heard, like she has said this a lot too, is just like, I'm not trying to be a Debbie Downer. I want to be excited about the fact that we're seeing Halloween so early. But like don't play in our faces. Like if you're going to put out Halloween early and you're going to commit to that and show that you care about our dollar, also give us some like respect that we also put our dollar towards things that we can see the quality of see the time spent on and not just simply oh it's halloween and i'm gonna spend money on it because that would have been more impressive i think if the, it would have shown a little bit of this is an actual halloween release it really would have because i think that like they did some studies and everything and i think that whatever there's their people who are doing case studies were off the mark and they were just like people are buying halloween stuff year round or earlier because they put it up year round because they're goth and it's like mm, close people are putting it up year round because some people need the serotonin boost of halloween year round so just make it halloween don't do the whole oh it's kind of goth or whatever the case it's just like no People want it because of the serotonin boost of the holiday, not necessarily because it fits their aesthetic. I mean, yes, of course, there's some people out there who are just like, yes, it fits my aesthetic. But that's not the point of the hunt or the people buying out stores for this, that, and the other. It is it is because of the holiday. And I think that the people who did these case studies at their companies were thinking too much in the box and were like, there's no way people want actual Halloween year round. Like, that's very niche. And it's like... It's not as niche as you would think anymore. Everybody's depressed. <laughs> Usually stores start putting stuff out like officially that are actual Halloween stuff um, the second week of June or the third. TJ Maxx and Marshalls already are starting to have stuff on their website. Um, so that's exciting because that means that it's going to start showing up in the home goods stores and stuff soon. And home goods is my jam. I find a majority of my favorite things are from Home Goods. Like, it, they're the main place for like hunts to happen and stuff because they have something different and you can look through all the different things they have in the home decor section. So that's exciting because I feel like once it hits Home Goods or Marshalls or TJ Maxx or places like that, that's where real hunting starts and not just like shopping around. This weekend, I'm going to estate shelf shopping with my cousin who just bought a house and is looking for some different things for renovating her house and everything and she's looking for some 
antique like she wants to do like a buffet as a sink type of thing so she's looking for the stuff like that so that'll be fun to go stage sale shopping and see what maybe some Halloween finds we can find while we're out and that'll be in the vlog after this one I don't know I'm not gonna keep up with these I'm gonna be honest with you they're gonna all bleed into one another and next thing you know I'm gonna be referencing things that happened in a vlog before or happening in a vlog that hasn't released or whatever the case is and that is okay because I'm new to this okay this has been great I'm going to go into my hole of working it's about to be 2 1 30 I've been up since 5 and this is exciting that it's 1.30 and I'm getting out of my, my official work and I'm going to go do some of my side hustle work. I'm be able to sit here and talk to y'all. If I wanted to leave in the middle of the day and go thrifting, I could do that. Maybe that'll happen tomorrow. Maybe that'll happen. <laughs> I'll see y'all in the next one. Bye.